Hey guys, what's up? I hope everyone is doing awesome. Welcome to the first part of our next series called Trust Issues. Now, all of us have been hurt in our lives, no matter what kind of hurt it is, whether it's been hurt by friends, hurt by family, hurt by people on Facebook who leave mean comments, right? Or even some of us have hurt ourselves. We have all have been hurt at some point point we all have faced problems and issues and all of these problems and issues can build up emotional walls that prevent us from trusting other people or really even trusting ourselves but what happens when we treat God how we treat other people here's an example maybe you've prayed for something and you've prayed a lot like and I mean a lot maybe you've prayed for for days for weeks for months maybe even for years, and you feel like God still hasn't answered you yet. Maybe the outcome of certain situations that you prayed about did not turn how you wanted it to. And these types of things can cause us to put up walls with God. And I'm gonna be real here for a second. Sometimes when my prayers, when they don't get answered in a way that I want them to be answered, I get angry with God. I get frustrated. I get mad. I say things I don't want to say and I do things that I don't want to do. And I put up a wall with God. Yes, I am human too. I do these things too. Okay. And this leads up to trust issues and how we can develop trust issues with God. Trust issues can cause us to have what I like to call reluctant faith. Reluctant faith, meaning that you don't really feel like trusting God anymore, but you know that you have to. So you just kind of go through the motions and you pray, but you really don't expect anything really. You say, oh, I'm going to pray about it. And then you kind of pray about it, but you don't have any expectations. You really don't have any faith behind your prayer. And then things don't work out. And then you kind of just spiral out of control. And now you're just in a dark place and your mind is an absolute mess. It's normal for this to happen, sadly, and I'd argue that everybody who follows Christ at some point has a moment like that. Now, I've used the example about the apostles on the boat in the storm before. When, you know, talking about trust issues and issues with, you know, having faith in certain situations. Because, you know, they're on a boat with Jesus, a man who they witnessed firsthand do all these awesome things, and they didn't trust that they would live when the water got rough. If you want to read more about that, that's in Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 23. Today I want to focus on a short little passage of scripture from Isaiah chapter 55. Now Isaiah was a prophet, or someone who is called to speak on God's behalf. And if you want to know more about prophets, the Bible Project has a great, great video. It's only about eight minutes long to really explain more about prophets. But in short, prophets are people who were called by God to speak on his behalf to his people. So, now that you got that, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I'm going to read that again, just just because it's short and I, I want to read it again. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God reminds us here that it's not by our will, but by His will that things happen and just because things happen doesn't that don't make us like feel good at the moment doesn't mean that God doesn't love you or have a plan for you it just means that it wasn't meant to happen it doesn't even mean that you did anything bad either it just means that it wasn't part of God's will and God's plan for your life newsflash if God doesn't want something for you in your life it isn't going to happen Likewise, if God wants something for your life, it's going to be done. 
no matter what you have to go through, it's going to be done. Just look at Samson and Jonah, and I could, I'll cover them in a wholly, totally other different video. God wants something to happen for your life. It's going to happen, no matter how hard you fight it. It is by God's will and God's grace that things happen. Even if that means allowing us to kind of fall away and go into a dark place. Because it's in our dark places where we really focus, fix our focus back to God. God doesn't want that to happen. But if it has to happen for you to get back to focusing on God's will and God's plan for your life, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Peter tells us in his letter to Asia, to Christians in Asia, 1 Peter, all about this. So I'm going to read from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. Very, very, very powerful. You think... You see, things happen to us, good or bad, because it's God's will. God wants us to be closer to Him. And He uses situations in our life to pull us in and make us closer, good or bad. God loves you so much that no matter how many walls you put up, He will find you. You can build a whole prison of emotional walls. But God will break in and pull you out. Part of the reason why we have trust issues with God is because we forget that it's His will, not our will. All things will work for the good of God, no matter how hard we fight it, no matter how bad we might feel about certain situations, in the long run, it is God's will, not our will. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.